I love a wonderful, relaxing afternoon. And when I hear the birds saying the sky blue, it just seems to me that's exactly how God wants it to be. Except life isn't always like that. Sometimes it's pretty tough, as a matter of fact. And when Jesus said, I, my peace I give unto you, he said it on the most difficult night of his life. So this message is for anyone who looks for God's peace, but whose life is going through challenges. God bless you, and I look forward to meeting you when you come to visit us here at First Presbyterian Church. Well, someone was telling me just before the service that they got a little chuckle out of the email that I sent to you on Tuesday, if you got it, where I said, wait, don't come to the church, because we had said, pray for our meeting. So some people said, okay, we'll come to the meeting. And uh, that was a different kind of thing, but we, uh, I appreciate your prayers and your support. Uh, I also appreciate so those of you who have bought the book Disciple Shift and are starting to do some reading and thinking about that. We'll talk about the next section in April. But now we concentrate on the events of Holy Week. On Palm Sunday, as we've now referenced more than once, Jesus comes riding into Jerusalem. His ministry had begun in the hinterlands up north. He had come to know those country people. That's where he was raised. And the crowds kept growing and growing and growing. And now they are by the thousands and tens of thousands. And as he comes into Jerusalem, he faces those twin forces symbolized by twin buildings, really. There was the Roman garrison in Jerusalem that was right next to the temple. In fact, it was so close and built higher so they could look down to see what might be going on in there. So those two forces, the state and the church, the religious authority, were right there cheek by jowl. And as he comes into the city, all the people are chanting... Psalm 118, which was part of their tradition as they enjoyed Passover. And with the chant went like this, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. From the house of the Lord we bless you. The Lord is God, and he has made his light shine on us with bows in hand, join in the festal procession up to the horns of the altar. So that's why they had those palm fronds. They were living out that particular passage. And as they lay their cloaks on the ground, this kind of red carpet for Jesus to come in on, the words from Zechariah would have just been echoing in their heads and was sung throughout the crowd. Of course, the Roman authorities might have thought, it's so strange, this, this leader is coming in riding on a little donkey. But this is what they were thinking about. Rejoice greatly, daughter Zion. Shout, daughter Jerusalem. See, your king comes to you righteous and victorious, lowly, and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. All that had been predicted, they felt now it was finally coming to pass. And while Jesus rode into town, the words from our passage today in Luke, they may well have been on his mind. From Luke chapter 12, starting at verse 49. I have come to bring fire on the earth. And how I wish it were already kindled. But I have a baptism to undergo. And what constraint I am under until it is completed. Do you think I came to bring peace on earth? No, I tell you, but division. From now on there will be five in one family divided against each other. Three against two and two against three. They will be divided father against son and son against father, mother against daughter and daughter against mother, mother in law against daughter in law, and daughter in law against mother in law. May we pray. Lord, as you clarify your word, speak its truth to our hearts that we might understand and know what it is to follow you in the easy days and in the hard days. In Jesus' name, amen. It almost feels like the Lord is committed to aiding me in my preaching by having me go through experiences in life about the same time those texts come up. 
So as Jesus enters into what can only be described as the great crisis, the passion, with all the challenges that are there, turns out we face a few challenges too. Cindy said to me, what a weird week this has been. First, ISIS, and then the presbytery. Now, to be clear, there is a great difference between ISIS and the presbytery. ISIS is further away. <clears throat> I'm just kidding. So here is the ISIS thing. Perhaps you heard on the news that list of airmen who uh, their personal information from Facebook has been taken and they're asked to retaliate against their families. Well, our son-in-law is on that list. And so that those lone wolf operators can get back at their families. So I, I got a call from my daughter who's leading a Bible study at her home and, and I, I'd sent with my sermon on not worrying some months ago and, uh, and she thought that might be perfect, perfect for her group as the wives of these pilots gather to pray. And then the other challenge is we had the presbytery. I, I mentioned this meeting that we had and we met this past Tuesday. I have to say this meeting was utterly unique in my experience. I mean, I've been through some tough meetings, the meeting with the uh, alcohol intervention for a family or, or someone, I have to dial up CPS on somebody uh, that's in my office. But this was a pretty challenging meeting. Perhaps the low point was when someone made the unfortunate analogy that one of them had, had experienced in their life, they, they had been in, they had shoplifted. And this person from the presbytery was saying, well, you know, it wasn't that I took so much, but just the store owner was tired of people stealing from him, so they decided to throw the book at me. And that's kind of your situation with the presbytery. They're tired, and they're throwing the book at you. Well, one of our members got fairly close to him, I think about this close, and, and said words that were very audible in the room and possibly audible down the street. And the question was, are you saying that we are stealing? Of course not, he said. I believe he looked down at that point and no blows were thrown. So it was pretty tough. And that committee is in a bind because uh, some voices in the presbytery want a much harder deal. And we wondered, we wondered for our part, is there a real goal, some nefarious plan? Do they want to stop everything? Do they want to make it difficult? Maybe they want to replace me and the session. I mean, how far can this thing go? Well, I'm pleased to tell you that I really do think we will work, we will work something out. I wasn't so sure on Tuesday, and maybe not so sure on Wednesday, but I think we're going to get there there is a good basis for us to have an agreement. Well, thank you, I want to say, for praying. And our next meeting is on April 14, and you can pray for us at that time too and up until then. What can happen when you get in these kinds of situations is that you can want to withdraw. You can feel as if there is nothing of God in these circumstances that is as tough and confrontational as this. And on top of that, you can wonder, am I really in the fight of my life with fellow Christians, with other religious leaders? How can this be? And so with that question in mind, I redirect your attention to Palm Sunday. What if Jesus had said, this conflict stuff, it just shouldn't be. The high priest and the Pharisees should not be causing me high blood pressure. They are men of God. I don't want to be here. I think I'll go back to Nazareth. Everybody liked me there. Now he knew that this was the way he had to travel. His journey was not away from conflict, but right through it. Now, don't get me wrong, there's a whole stream in our faith that leads us in the way of peace. I mean, don't you love the words of Proverbs 3, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding in all your ways. Submit to him or acknowledge him and he will make your paths straight. That just sounds so perfect. And Philippians, we know, well, rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your request to God. 
And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. I love that. The bucolic scene from the 23rd Psalm moves us with the shepherd, that is God himself as shepherd, taking care of us as his sheep. Some of you were with us at Kirk Kirkpatrick's memorial. And they read the 23rd Psalm because it was such an important piece to him. One of his kids remembered how practical the 23rd Psalm was for him. He really enjoyed training horses, and he was training this horse in this pen. And that horse was not interested in being trained that day. And so he was working him and working him and working him. And some of you know what that's like. And as they got round and round, he, he finally said he came over to by his son. He put his, his foot on the rail, pushed back his cowboy hat. His face was drenched in sweat. And he said, it's times like these you really need the 23rd Psalm. Kirk's story is... I think a good picture of how this peace and this calm works. It's not simply on the days when all is right. That peace comes to us when we are in the ring, whether that ring involves a stubborn horse or a stubborn problem at work. It comes when we are working on a situation that isn't resolving itself easily. Jesus' peace is especially meant for those times when we are in the middle of a storm. Because life is filled with storms. If God is only for the peaceful times, what in the world was he doing when he set Moses before Pharaoh? If God only wants us to have it easy, why was there a constant struggle for Israel to become a nation and an ongoing battle for them to remain faithful? When Jesus said that night, my peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you, He is saying that on the night of the most stressful time in his life when he will will later literally sweat great drops of blood and ask God to have this cup pass from him. In our text today, Jesus specifically says that part of his mission is conflict. Even though he brings peace, he is also bringing fire. He knows that he will be the source of division. He says, do you think I came to bring peace on earth? No, I tell you, but division. He will be the cause of more arguments than perhaps anyone else on earth. And Holy Week, it is about conflict. It is about one man deciding that he would bring the truth of God right into the face of the very ones who claim they served God, but actually only served themselves. It is about one man saying, this is what God is like. And turning over the money changer tables and demanding that his father's house be a house of prayer rather than a den of thieves. It's about one man giving his all even to the point of death so that we could finally see ourselves for who we are and see God for who he is in that one man. It is in Holy Week that we realize it's not somebody else, it's us crying out, crucify. We are the ones with the spikes and hammers. It is our sin that nailed him to the tree. Isaiah 53 is finally lived out. Surely he took up our pain and bore our suffering, yet we considered him punished by God, stricken by him and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him, and by his wounds we are healed. We all, like sheep, have gone astray. Each of us has turned to, his own, to, uh, to our own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. It turns out it is we who have stolen. And it is he who has paid the price. You don't like conflict? Neither do I. Jesus said, though it would be like that, but he also said something else. He said he would be with us. And he demonstrates in this week that he knows what it is like to be in the minority at times, to see fickle fans melt away and hear the critics cry, crucify. So we relive the drama of this week. 
And the question must be asked, where would you have been if you were there? With that cheering crowd that turns on him in a few days because the going is hard? With those disciples who are with him all the way but just can't quite stay awake? He is challenging our church and he is challenging each of us. Can you walk with me through the tempest as well as the tame? Can you ride with me into Jerusalem not simply because you hope I will solve your problems but because you know that even in conflict, even in hard and wrenching challenge, I am the Lord himself and my peace I give to you. In the light of what Christ has done, This process with the presbytery, it doesn't seem quite as daunting. In that light, we walk with this man into our Jerusalems, whether it's at the negotiating table or or it's with that troubled teen or the business model that isn't working. Whatever we face, we walk with him knowing that he understands conflict. He even brings conflict. In fact, If it were not for Jesus, I doubt we would have any challenges with the presbytery. However, because of our understanding of his call upon our lives and his call for this ministry, we do. That is just how it is. He brings the fire, but he also gives the peace. So how about you? Tough week? Tough year? Challenging situations you are facing? It doesn't mean the Lord is not in this. He rides right into that situation with you. And he comes humbly on a donkey. He doesn't demand that you let him in. But if you do, he will be the calm in your storm. He will be the Psalm 23 in your corral. And in his eyes, you will see your own reflection better than in any mirror. By his stripes, we are healed. There is a kind of ironic phrase that is related to these negotiations with the presbytery and that is that we are bound by a trust clause that means that we hold everything in trust for the denomination there is another and there is a greater trust clause and it is our trust in Jesus Christ and that trust will never be broken even in life's toughest storms would you pray with me God, I have my challenges. But so do these people. They have a mortgage that isn't working out right. They have a child that is in trouble. They have lots of things. And so, Lord, we lift up to you those circumstances. And I ask that you would help them to know that it is you walking right right beside them, right beside each of us. And now, Lord, as we give of our resources, use these funds in such a way that the challenges abate and that peace reigns and that you are seen clearly. For we pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. And we are. Friends go into this world knowing that everything's not perfect. It's still tough sometimes. But even in that hardness, Jesus says, I'm with you always to the close of the age. And let's affirm that in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit and all God's people said, Amen. Amen.